What's up guys, it's myself here from Stratagenesis, and I'm giving you a small update, basically um, what's been going on recently. I've been working on the Bioshock guide, and I had, I got caught into a snag. Uh, a lot of the video um, that I shot for one particular level all got corrupted, and it took me a really long time to figure out how to fix it. But um, I have actually, on another note, I've actually been playing Minecraft with my brother on a server, on our server. Um, and I just wanted to show you guys kind of what's been going on. Um, this is actually the spawn point. Um, I have no items. You can, well, I'm Sasuke here. Uh, I have no items on me because I transferred it over from the multiplayer server to a single player so that I can run it better. So it has nothing to do with my internet connection. I ran into some problems while recording that. But um, basically, we basically swam over I'm using basically too much but anyway we swam over uh, and our main thought was to get into a mountain and you know bury ourselves in there and that has turned into this humongous castle um, that has a lot of floors um, has its own transit system going down to a good mining floor and it has its own observation tower though it's not really uh, not really much is visible from up there um, now, for the remainder of this video, I'll actually be changing the draw distance down a little bit so that my computer's not being completely annihilated here by the uh, by the game. Uh, I made a door, a two, uh, a double door there that is activated um, by a switch and a plate. Here's my brother playing with some sound. Uh, they make uh, make a little sound when you come in the door. Oh, there you go. Alright, anyway, uh, here's our little disposal area. There's a uh, lava coming in. We have a, a waterfall coming in from the side of the mountain um, into a endless or infinite water pool, as well as a nether realm thing that this is actually broken because I don't know. Well, I didn't I didn't build it right, so it, it's not really working too well. Um, and basically, to show you some of the cooler parts of this um, area. Um, this originally was a really small room, um, and it has since expanded. Um, uh, originally, it was just to um, house our beds and stuff, and now we have our own chests with our, our stuff in there, which I should probably grab some gear um, and items because... Or pickaxe, I should do that. Let me go ahead and make myself a pickaxe. Where's some iron? I know we have iron somewhere around here. Here we go. Okay. And we need sticks. Is there sticks in here? Oh, whoa, 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 what's going on? Okay. Let's get ourselves a pickaxe. Because this is my single player, so uh, all my items and stuff are on my multiplayer account. Um, anyway, so this is the transit system over there. We'll check that out in a second. Um, let's go down to this, uh, my wheat farm. The production room. So over here we have a manual wheat farm. Um, this houses about... 50 to 60 wheat um, per farm, and their high yield, uh, or I, what I would say is like high yield because of the speed at which they um, they crop so fast. Uh, basically, the ground is pretty much always hydrated, so you never have to till. Um, and you just walk around, you beat them like this, and uh, you put the seeds back on it once you don't want to lose that seed, right? You basically put the seeds back on it once that's done, and um, it's not really my design. I saw it um, online from someone, uh, but I thought it was really pretty. Uh, it's got glass in the center here, and you, so you can see there's water. Um, lots of torches on moss stone, which we got from dungeons. And on the other side, we have a wheat factory. And here, this thing is actually running right now um, because I guess one of us pressed the button and forgot to uh, to reset the mechanism. But um, basically, you farm, uh, you you come through here, and you uh, till the land, you plant your seeds, and when they're all grown, they um, uh, you can press the button down there, and the water strips them from the land and actually brings them to that collection point up there. And now for the minecart uh, transit station here. Um, so I have a switch. And what this switch does is, when I when it's going to the left, both of these tracks 
will go down to layer 16 so 16 layers from bedrock from the very bottom bedrock and so let's do it and um, as you can see this is all nice and pretty it's all labeled um, I was exploring a lot we've got uh, explored dungeon there's a bottom floor um, area right here with lava right through this ladder that uh, goes all the way back up to the main part of the castle here we've got the little choo-choo train and the the minecart uh, treasure box thing um, it takes valuables up or <laughs> it takes materials back up so all we have to do is connect this piece of track and just send it on going and it'll reach the top by itself which is kinda handy uh, when you have to move um, lots and lots of materials um, but as you can see this this um, this floor down here has been heavily mined um, don't want to fall down there just pretty much it's been mined to bits there's just so much mining in here going on um, every basically how I mine is uh, one row and then you skip two in the center oh, what's going on here right, and then you, then you go another row and you skip two in the center and you go another row and you skip two in the center and you go another row uh, it, and you basically get a lot of coverage on um, on pretty much everything around you um, so you don't miss diamond uh, you have a higher chance of missing diamond up at the top but um, that's not really a big issue so let's go back up it's a good thing we have two rails with two sets of carts and we don't want to go there at night because we're gonna get pummeled I still haven't added good amount of lighting up there so there's gonna be monsters so let's sleep it out alright so it should be daytime now or yeah okay Let's do the draw distance thing again so we can see everything. Alright, good. Now, let's go to the tower. It's on the right. And basically what this switch does, it switches both the tracks. Um, this one will switch to the right. And that one over there will switch to the left. As you can see, it's uh, broken from going down to the bottom. Um, so we're going to go and take a different track. Let's go up. Just slow the video down to this part. Um over here there was a uh, a tree and as you can see I carved out a nice little passageway for um, for basically the car to go through the tree and there's like a nice little tunnel but of course uh, I got ambushed by a creeper and that's what's left of the ark that I built um, so that's not too handy but here we are we're at the top uh, now that I think about it, this tower is actually not very tall, but that's because we're on top of a mountain. And normally when you build a tower or some sort of lighthouse, it's from the bottom. So, yeah. Uh, this little spring down here, that's actually where water to the waterfall is coming. Uh, it just happens to be there. No idea why. So let's go ahead and present this cart here. Um, and let's enter the tower and see if some zombies died here. Uh, that's the hole that we initially dug up from the bottom. Or around the tower. This was supposed to be an infinite water pool. Not sure what happened anymore. Um, so let's go up. And we've got some glass flooring so we can see down. Um, this allows us to stand up here and sort of uh, survey the land. Though with the draw distance there's not really much you can see. Um, but you can see the thing I will leave for last which is a massive construction that was happening underwater and I might do a tutorial on that so let's go ahead and skip to the monster spawner alright so we've arrived at the monster spawner uh, so it's sort of a time skip here this is the little station that we've set up this is the booster car and this is what takes you to that underwater dome that I'll be showing later uh, but I figured I should leave the best for last and as such here is the monster spawner uh, so basically um, all you have to do is you stand here and oh look at that already some gunpowder um, you can see there's monsters dying uh, if they don't die by the lava up there um, they die by the water they drown um, this channel is about too deep um, if you guys want I can actually show how to build this uh, my version actually there's a couple of versions of them on YouTube and I sort of built a hybrid one um, so 
yeah. Uh, lots of bones, lots of gunpowder. Uh, it works pretty nicely. I actually haven't tested, so I can't give any raw numbers. But if anyone's looking to build one, I am willing to help. Um, so let's go ahead and check out what makes this thing tick. So let's set this thing to peaceful. Because I am on single player right now. Um, I, I dragged the world over from the multiplayer. And uh, I don't have any tools. Alright guys, here I am back. Uh, I've lit the room fully and I am on peaceful so there's no monster spawning or anything trying to kill me. But basically uh, how this works is that there's uh, a good amount of ground here for them to spawn the monsters. And oh, let's go ahead and put this as four, which is um, that's what I'm used to. All right, uh, this is where the monsters spawn. They eventually fall into these channels, and I should mention these are half blocks. They can actually walk up these half blocks, um, and they continue to get dragged down down by the current out of their own stupidity, I guess. Um, and basically, uh, it's three uh, three blocks, two blocks of water three blocks for them to spawn, two blocks of water. They do not spawn on water, do not make that mistake that I made when uh, we initially fully flooded this room and we're like, aha, we're gonna get all the monsters to, you know, obviously all flow into this, into our area. And, and that didn't quite work so well because monsters do not spawn on water. And I don't think they actually spawn on half blocks either. They, I think they need to spawn on full blocks. So, I haven't actually tested that, but I didn't see any monsters spawning when I had tons of half blocks. Uh, and once we changed them to these um, these uh, full blocks, then we had monsters spawning. Uh, it's kind of tricky to get the water flowing um, all like that towards the center. Um, but basically, this is what it looks like. And this is what you're going to want um, when, when you're uh, trying to blast mine, if you're trying to collect... Um, gunpowder. This is exactly what you need. Um, and I should mention that this is eight blocks, um, eight blocks away from where it stops, and then there's a drop. So let's see, right there. Oh, it's kind of dark. Let's do that. Oh, okay. One second. There we go. All right. So here's where the water actually stops. Once I pull that block, you can see water stops here. There's a drop of one level, and there's another eight blocks pushing towards the lava. Um, so let's stop right here because we don't want to die. Um, I put a roof of glass, and basically what ha what this is supposed to do with the glass roof is that once they're um, at the point where they're facing the lava, they don't jump up and get on top of the lava, which kills the item. So what ends up happening is that their face eats the lava and the item falls um, down there. Uh, the ladders keep it the item from falling into... Uh, oh crap. Oh uh, boy. I'm, I should mention this water is extremely powerful. It's almost like impossible to get out of here. So let's do this. Oh, okay. There we go. Alright. Um, then it's too deep after that. We've got cactuses here and this always kills the spiders. I don't know why, but the spiders like this center area. Um, either that or they come through the center or through the sides and get cooked in the face with uh, napalm or whatever lava. So this is what it looks like. Uh, just a giant enormous dark room. It's 50 by 50. It took forever to dig out. Um, but I think it was worth it because within a couple hours we collected enough gunpowder to make lots of TNT and that allowed us to blast mine um, for the project um, that we were working on, which was the dome, which I, that's what I'm heading back to now. All right, welcome back to the last part of this video. Um, now, this is the glass dome. This is the construction that has taken for freaking ever. As you can see, we are quite a ways down, I think about anywhere from 10 to 15 blocks down, and this is inside of the water, um, which means we had to get it out. Uh, my brother likes to use the word dredge, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but we've been um, pretty much dropping sand and gravel and soil on the water blocks, and then when you dig them out, 
um, you uh, you get rid of the water, which is exactly what you want for this kind of construction. Now, some of the plans that I have um, to do left uh, is to get this stream of um, lava to go all the way around circle and meet back there with this stream, um, which is also going to be lava, but I use water for testing um, because uh, lava is extremely messy to clean up. So... Um, but that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching if you made it this far. Um, there's definitely going to be more, more Minecraft stuff. Um, so comment, rate, subscribe. I'd really appreciate um, any comments on this whatsoever. But um, any any tutorials or something like that that people would want me to do, I am I will, I will gladly do them because I like this game. And if you like Minecraft, you're cool because Minecraft likes you. Anyway, um, that is that, and I will see you guys next time.